Today we pick up our Bible study in Matthew chapter 21. We'll look at verses 23 through 32. Jesus had come preaching and teaching things that only the chief priests and the elders believed that they themselves had the right to preach. And Jesus taught things that were new and against some of the traditions that they had implemented. It is natural instinct that when one is pushed against to push back in defense and to attack that source. The chief priest and the elders felt this way toward Jesus and they sought to put an end to his ministry. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 23, they questioned Jesus about where he had received his authority to teach as he did, such as what we might do in questioning someone as to where they received their college degree or training as to having some background for what they are preaching. In Matthew chapter 21, verses 24 through 27, Jesus agreed to answer their question if they would answer one question about where did John the Baptist receive his baptism? Was it from heaven or was it from men? But the chief priests and the elders were smart in their answers. They knew that whatever answer they gave would smear themselves in one way or another. So they replied that they did not know the answer. Jesus, therefore, refused to answer their question to the fault of their own. But Jesus did not stop there. He explained his reasoning to them in an attempt to get them to realize and understand who he really was, the son of the most high God of heaven. He explained to them that not believing at first could be forgiven if they would repent and turn and believe in him. But as they continued to have hardened hearts to him, Jesus proclaimed in Matthew chapter 21, verses 31b through 32, as I quote from the New King James Version, Assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe in him. Jesus used those who would be considered by society to be the least to be the example of his teachings, as we saw in Matthew chapter 19, verse 30, and then again in Matthew chapter 20, verse 16, of the last will be first and the first will be last. This is a promise of the forgiveness of Jesus if one will repent and believe in him. This is an example of the hardness of man's heart against Jesus. We too have an issue with our own beliefs being against the teachings of Jesus. But Jesus did not come to punish us for disobedience and disbelief in God. He came to save us from it. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, quoting from the New International Version, states, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have it eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn him, but to save the world through him. If you feel God convicting your heart today, turn from the sinful ways of this world. Ask Jesus to forgive you for the sins you have committed and open your heart to receive God's Holy Spirit and a new life in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Jesus has never turned away a sincere heart and he will not turn you away from the forgiveness that he has been waiting to give you all your life. Dear Lord, please help us to see that because we have refused to believe in you and the power of salvation in your one and only Son, Christ Jesus, that it is not too late to begin believing today and receive eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Savior of the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.